Okay, we have a question from Nikki who asks, have Labour been more scarred by the short trust era than the Tories? As Starmer and Reeves seem to have taken from it that all borrowing is a mortal sin, even if it is for investment that generates more money in the long run. I would say obviously the Conservatives are more scarred. Mm -hmm. Um, Every voter that you speak to remembers the disaster of Liz Truss's premiership and largely blames it for the rise in interest rates. So I think the Tories are more scarred, I would Mm -hmm. argue that. But it's very interesting the way that it has impacted the way Labour are sort of handling themselves as a government in waiting. This idea of what what Liz Truss was doing, which was tax cuts but unfunded, seems to have spilt into Labour's view that they can't sort of borrow more money for their policies, i.e. borrow to invest. So there is a very big difference between the two. Andy Haldane, the former chief economist of the Bank of England was explaining this to me in an interview recently where he was saying these two very different things, borrowing to invest, you know, is something obviously that should repay in the long term and shouldn't be something that Labour or the Conservatives are afraid of doing. Mm -hmm. But they've taken the wrong lessons from that disastrous time. Yeah, exactly. I think Liz Truss is still haunting uh, the Labour Party. During the mini budget or in the aftermath of the mini budget, Labour said you can't trust the Conservatives on the economy. They saw a chance to become the party of fiscal responsibility. Mm. And I think the the backdrop of the context for this was the fact that they've had Liam Burns' famous 2010 letter that he left in the Treasury, which I think said there's no money left. But I, There is no money. There is no money. That was it. I, I wanted it, to get it right. And the Conservatives and the Coalition, the Lib Dems as well, have been trotting this out for the past eight or ten years. I mean, it still came up this year. Yeah. To say that you can't trust the Labour Party with the economy because the implication was that they had crashed uh, the financial sector in 2008. I think there were so many people in Labour who were excited. They couldn't resist to have their own thing to bash the Tories with, uh, that they went too far. And the key distinction, as you say, Anoush, they had to make and they failed to make, and we did make at the time, was that you can borrow to invest because that will lead to growth over time. You get a return on your investment. What the, The key problem with the Liz Truss agenda was that she wanted to borrow to uh, bring about tax cuts and there was little evidence that that would lead to massive increase in growth and therefore you wouldn't get your return. Yeah. Now we can see that Labour are so focused um, and conscious and anxious to become the party of fiscal responsibility that they are dumbing down uh, some of their rhetoric at least. As we always try and distinguish on the podcast in Morning Call and on our writing in general between the messaging and the policy itself. I I wrote uh, last week that there might be a risk for Labour in uh, maintaining the policy, perhaps. But if their messaging doesn't back up the policy now, they won't have created the ideological atmosphere or the acceptance or the consensus within the media, within uh, the commenta- exactly. commentary. Yeah. Then they're going to get into office say, oh, so sorry, no, now we do actually want to borrow <laughs> to invest. Everyone's going to go, well, hang on a minute. You've just been attacking Liz Trust for two years. You're a hypocrite or were you lying at the time? Yeah, and more... Worryingly, the markets will be surprised by that. What they should have been doing ever since Liz Truss fell out of office and, you know, they've been trying to maintain this sheen of fiscal discipline is saying the specific things they wanted to borrow for so that that is priced in by the markets. They know Labour is going to do that. They know Labour expects to get the return on investment of X amount and they won't be spooked by it when Labour decides to put it in place if it gets into government. They haven't done that, which means that they get into this messy situation where Keir Starmer can't even agree to reverse the two-child benefit cap, Mm -hmm. for example. I think that's about 1.5 1.5 to yeah. 2 billion. That's something that if they, you know, if they had given themselves a little bit more room, they wouldn't be in that situation that is causing some internal division. I know that they got through the National Policy Forum sort of quite unscathed mm-hmm. by the left and the kind of noises off from, from the unions. But still, it's not an ideal position to be. And presumably, it's it's a policy that Keir Starmer would like to reverse. In fact, he has said so in the past that he would like to reverse it. So it does kind of, I think it chips away at Labour's soul a bit, the fact that they've put these yeah. straight jackets on their policies. Yeah, quite. And I wouldn't underestimate the leadership's ease with which they'd happily chip away at Labour's soul. They've been doing that for a long time and I think uh, on purpose. But one of the the key debates that this is distilled uh, down to is Labour's fiscal rules and what they mean. There is so much ambiguity uh, over what their fiscal rules are. And I'm just going to quote from one of their briefing documents on their fiscal rules. They say that instead of the current five-year projection from the government, we project public finances over 10 years and provide estimates for an additional 10 years. Now, I've read that to mean that they want to extend the period 
to receive a return on investment. If it's only five years, then you're not going to have the time to get a return on your investment like with anything else. So that, yeah. that's the, I see that as them trying to extend the projection period for government finances. However, Keir Starmer has also come out and said that he wants to reduce fi- a debt within five years. The FT has reported the same. And there's there's also been mentioned that they want to reduce debt within a parliament. Which is within stricter, the parliament, than, the, which is stricter, stricter than the government. Because the government is on a rolling five-year yeah. basis. So it's always five years ahead, five years ahead. If you say you want to reduce debt within a single parliament then it goes from five years to four years to three years to two years to one yeah, year. Yeah. There is a lot of ambiguity and confusion over what they want to do. And maybe that's intentional. I think much of it is. But it is leading to this problem we were discussing before. They, they are creating a straight jack- jacket. They are creating confusion. They are com- creating an atmosphere which won't necessarily allow them to achieve what they want to achieve in office. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. We'd love to know what you think. Please make sure you leave your comments below. And if you enjoyed watching this podcast, you can watch more of our videos on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe.